Thank you very much for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. This here, El Popo Catapetal, most likely known as El Popo, and this here uh, is erupting. We've seen this the last few days. This is a, a massive issue to say the least. I want to dive into this, what it even means for uh, Central America, the Gulf of Mexico, and the Caribbean, even parts of the United States. We need to watch out for a potential ash plume out of this, and it could even impact the weather. Sometimes that happens. More on that, but this is what's going on. Now, about eight, nine months ago, there were similar eruptions and then things settled down but recently flaring up again and this here is Mexico City this here is El Popo just off to the southeast of Mexico City very close to Mexico City and with that again a huge population here now this was yesterday and you could see this the eruptions they've been ongoing and we've been seeing scenes like this unfortunately uh, adding to these plumes that get into the air so there's been a lot of ash of course to say the least low air quality so one thing I'm going to do going forward forward is be able to kind of track where we see some of these ash plumes going and if you get some of the big ones which I'll talk about in just a second some of the massive ones they could actually impact the short term and longer term weather we have seen that with massive eruptions over the last few years this was last night and this morning ongoing from the webcam here and you see again sometimes it quiets down a little bit but this was just hours ago dark outside of course at that point but you see more of these eruptions and El Popo ongoing. So incredibly active and it is, it's a scary situation. So I kind of want to spell it out a little bit here. Here's a look at uh, the population just density and all you need to know about this is where you see the darker colors or the reds. Well, that's right near Mexico City and that's right where El Popo is. Obviously Mexico City incredibly highly populated in the areas around it. This here is uh, not a great scenario and we, we've known about this again for decades and decades of uh, with the population buildup around Mexico City and with this uh, volcano here. But this is the very latest as far as where the ash is going. Now, I haven't seen much of a, a debris flow with this or anything like that. There's a little bit of that. Uh, that would be a more dangerous event where a side of the volcano could blow out or you get the bigger eruption, which I'll, I'll dive into. But as of now, it's more of an ash plume. And yeah, it's been raining down ash in some spots. Mexico City's up here. So this here again, El Popo, and most of the ash, at least over the last 24 hours, has been more pushing off to the uh, east. And we've seen that over the last uh, few days and a little bit to the south as well. So that's where most of it has been going. We have not seen as much as we get back toward Mexico City. Now, uh, that's some good news because it's highly populated, but uh, every life, of course, uh, matters, and there's people in and around this area, and it is so hard. Uh, we all have different means. It's it's not as simple as getting out of the way. So uh, they're doing what they can as far as uh, monitoring this. Now, in Mexico, there's really a stoplight scale as far alert scale as far as uh, uh, kind of alerting folks of what's going on. The green it would be a normal situation, uh, watching volcanoes. But now we're in a yellow in a phase two, and that means. It's very active and uh, basically being in a yellow phase two may mean that at any point we could end up in the red alert level, which would mean bigger evacuations and things like that, more of an action mode. So we're right on the threshold of that being in a yellow phase two uh, in this area with El Popo. So now a bigger eruption, the major eruptions, kind of the classic ones you sometimes see, Mount St. Helens did that way back when, those are the, uh, right here, the Plinian eruptions. Those are the massive explosions. Sometimes they'll blow out a complete side of a volcano. The entire mountainside may get wiped away. In the Plinian eruptions, a couple things happen. One, you're going to get a more of the uh, the ash that gets way up there. It could impact the weather. Two, and more immediate, would be the massive debris flow that would kind of surge out and would really take out anything in its, in its path. And that's why, again, we have those alert phases, and they're trying to uh, monitor what's going on very carefully. Plinian eruption, the magma down below, what happens is it's actually very sticky magma. So um, it kind of builds up. It's kind of holding, it holds, keeps the gases down there. And then at some point when it builds up enough, then you get that huge eruption. And those are the big ones we're concerned about. Uh, El Popo itself, over the last thousand years, there have been three Plinian eruptions. So it does happen. Of course, that is, I would say, in the back of everyone's mind. That's probably in the front of everyone's mind. There's been evacuation drills going. They use a lot of the church bells in the areas uh, to uh, have 
have those uh, drills. Mexico City itself is just 80 kilometers away or about 50 miles away. 25 million people on alert with this. Again, a phase two yellow alert. I'll be monitoring uh, the volcano itself and the potential for that ash plume getting out into different locations. I'll stay on top of that, but we are thinking of our friends there. And again, as I mentioned, it's not just as easy as you know, as just simply getting away from it. Of course, there's hazards all over Earth, and not all of us have the means. So we are thinking of our friends there uh, with these ongoing eruptions. Thank you for sharing this information, subscribing to the channel, and passing it along to get the word out about what's going on near Mexico City. Now, in the big picture, we've been watching front after front in another system moving in. So we're going to watch those. We swing down here. Now, one thing we're going to watch out for is a surge in dust across the Caribbean. Again, the smoke itself, or the ash, I should say, uh, back from uh, El Popo. That's holding back toward the west at this point. And right now we've been watching one front clip by. You see here a couple showers possible today. And some of us had some welcome showers the last few days. Of course, others, we have been way too dry. We have that next surge of dust moving in. More on that in a second. But we're going to see a few spotty showers, Eastern Caribbean. And there's the next front working in today. This one's not a big one though. So back through the Bahamas, even over toward Cuba, we may catch a couple showers. This is on our Saturday afternoon. And as this continues to work across, most of the energy will lift up to the north. But you see here, Cayman Islands, Jamaica, parts of Cuba, Bahamas, Turks and Caicos. Could see a few spotty showers as we work our way into Sunday. And then very isolated elsewhere. But the dust is coming back. It's not going to be the biggest surge of dust. It's a big it's a big area now out in the Atlantic. As it moves in, it'll be a little bit less. But we're looking at some moderate dust. That is going to reduce the air quality. We've already had some dust around that didn't really uh, move out. So it's just going to add to some of the problems. We're going to see this across the Eastern Caribbean, especially anywhere from Guadalupe South through Trinidad and Tobago. This will happen. It'll start early next week, Monday and Tuesday. It'll be thicker uh, late Tuesday into about Thursday. So next week, another surge of dust will be moving in and I'll be on top of that for you. So again, one system that just left Bermuda, another one moving in. I'll zoom down here in just a second. Here's the front that'll work its way uh, through the Southeastern uh, United States. And again, elsewhere, some spotty showers. And of course, we've had some uh, spitting action back toward uh, the west near California. And eventually, heads up next week, if you happen to be watching this channel, uh, from parts of the central portions of the United States, there could be a tornado outbreak next week. So I'll monitor that. Now, here's that front moving by. And in yesterday's video, I was mentioning kind of an interesting feature that after this front passes by, there's going to be leftover moisture in the Atlantic where something may try to spin up. The models are still hinting at that. Not a hurricane or anything like that. This time, of year, but there could be something a little subtropical eventually developing late next week. But this again is Sunday afternoon. There's a system a little closer to California watching this here and then going out in time as we work our way into Monday. See the next system moving in here. That's the one that's going to move across the U.S. And then we have this here just kind of scraping by the Northern Caribbean, getting into the Atlantic region of Canada. It's been system after system, a couple of historic ones this uh, winter. Uh, but as of uh, this afternoon, we'll see a little bit of rain working in uh, parts of uh, New Brunswick, Prince Prince Edward Island, over toward Nova Scotia, New England, this system's going to zip by. And then as we work our way into tomorrow, you see some of the snow kind of on the back side of this. This is our Saturday afternoon. Uh, and then as we get into our Saturday, uh, just after midday, uh, Newfoundland, we'll see a better chance of some snow in spots, kind of starting out as rain, maybe a little snow on the back side of it. And then all of that will be pushing away as we get into tomorrow night and Sunday morning. So Jamaica, the rain chance is down, but it will start to creep up by Sunday with the next front moving in. Same thing in the Cayman Islands. I showed you the tail end of that front Sunday into Monday. A couple more showers possible. We'll be on the lookout for some of the dust next week. Trinidad and Tobago, even Barbados will get some dust next week through the weekend. Isolated chance of a shower, about a 40% chance in St. Lucia today, 20% chance through the weekend, and a 20% chance through the weekend in Grenada. And as we get back towards St. Vincent and the Grenadines, 10 to 20% chance of a shower. Martinique, 20 to 30% chance through the weekend. Same thing in Dominica. Could see a few isolated showers. We get back toward Guadalupe. We're looking at a 30% chance today and tomorrow. Same thing Antigua and Barbuda. Rain chance holding at 30%. St. Kitts, Nevis, and Montserrat. And a 30% chance right through the weekend. Anguilla and St. Bart, St. Martin, Ceiba, and Stasia. Rain chance this weekend, 20%. And then it bumps up a little bit in Puerto Rico. 30 to 40% chance through the weekend. And about a 30, even 40% chance U.S. and British Virgin Islands for this weekend. Dominican or 
Republic, about a 20% chance on Sunday. Mainly dry in Haiti, may catch a sprinkle or brief shower, especially by Sunday. Bahamas, watching our front that I mentioned moving across Florida, kind of works through especially northern and central Bahamas tomorrow. Cuba, same thing, tail end of the front, couple showers possible tomorrow. And then up to a 40% chance on Sunday in Belize, no washout, but rain chance also ticks up. Yucatan and Mexico, 40% chance. Aruba, about a 10% chance this weekend. Curacao and Bonaire, and again, the dust through the ABC Islands later next week. Bermuda, we've got that next front that's about to move in, higher rain chance for tomorrow. Costa Rica, about a 20 to 30% chance. 20 to 30% chance the next couple days in Guyana, a little bit higher by the time we get into early next week, same thing in Suriname and northern sections will have some of that dust. Uh, northern Venezuela as well, 20 to 30% chance. So monitoring El Popo very carefully for any long-term uh, kind of impacts to the weather. But of course, thinking of our friends that are near the volcano that is now erupting. Hopefully there's not that plenty in eruption, but that is a possibility. Tracking fronts on the move, the dust that will head our way. Keep an eye on that area that may try to spin up a little bit in the Atlantic next week. So thank you for sharing this important information. Have a good weekend ahead.